more economical but no less prestigious SUNY New Paltz. <laughs> Are you going somewhere with this, Dick? Then he watches the Pendleton tape and sees me. My charm, charisma, and hypnotic eyes draw him in like a slug to beer. You know, we're, we're entitled to go absolutely anywhere and do anything, mainly because we don't know there's anything wrong with what we're doing. Uh, we can be dirtier. We can be more outrageous. We can be politically incorrect. We can be incorrect in every conceivable way. And... We didn't know. Don't blame us. We didn't know we're aliens. It's just a gigantic uh, um, sanction. It's a it's a it's a permit that we have that nobody else has. Shouldn't have done that, black monster. Fluoride man's gonna open a can of whoop ass on you now. <laughs> I warned you. I think the thing that Third Rock does best, as opposed to other sitcoms, is uh, it's unabashedly goofy. I think it's. I think it's. I think it knows it's a sitcom, and I think it's not afraid to be that. But all the while, sort of winking at the fact that it's a sitcom, and I love that. Where are you taking me? We're taking you to the truth room. Actually, I need to go to the bathroom. But this is scary. Uh, but it's just a premise that allowed us to do things. I remember early on being aware of that when I sat in the squash court dressing room. And there's a moment where the fellow, seen from behind, he was drying himself with his towel. I was sitting next to him, looking around the locker room, and I looked right at his cock. And he said, can I help you? And I said, no thanks, just looking. And, you know, no other show allows one man to look right at another's cock and say, no thanks, just looking. I didn't know there was anything wrong with looking at a man's cock in a dressing room. I'm an alien. <laughs> Hokey smokes! <laughs> you done? I just spruced the place up a bit. A bit? Sally, you spruced the crap out of it! Well, it's just that ever since you gave me a key, I've wanted to get you nice things, and what with your Optima card just lying around, how can I not? Third Rock, I think, um, I don't think that there's a show on television that I've personally seen in the last ten years that has the physical comedy that we do, and I don't think there are, uh, all arrogance aside, honestly, I don't think there are for, you know, in terms of just the alien part of it, oh, there's Wayne, and, oh, it's impossible, but a cast that, that is as brave physically as we are. Oh, oh, I've got him! I've got him! Hey, lady, we only let children climb in the ball pit. <laughs> that is so sick. And whether it works all the time, I can't say. But I think it's a pretty uh, all-balls-out attitude from the get-go. And that's certainly led by John, without a doubt. And we just follow and go for it. If they promise to pay, we promise to let them in. <laughs> because at Pendleton, quality is job three. Sorry, well said, Dr. Solomon. Our priority is to get you out of your parents' house and into a classroom-like environment. It's fast, and uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of very dignified people walking around getting pies shoved in their face. And that can be understood in any language. It's not, we're not trying to change the world, nor are we trying to have a very special episode. We're just, our basic purpose is to make people laugh. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Tommy, do you realize how rude you're being? What I'm always proud of is that it, it doesn't, it never takes itself seriously, ever. And basically every other sitcom, at one point or another, they run out of ideas and they play the soap opera card, you know, and they want you to feel something for, but these are sitcom characters, you know? And we, I, I don't think we really ever did that. Anytime there was any sort of seriousness, which there rarely was, but anytime there was, it was always followed up by something hilarious right afterwards. And I think that... I think in that way we really kept more integrity than than any other show on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, he is our high commander, the one, the only, John Lithgow. Certainly, do remember what I think is the funniest moment, uh, which was 
when I stormed upstairs in drag and yanked off my wig and earrings. It's about my family. <laughs> <laughs> the woman I love won't let me be a woman. <laughs> and said, I need some herbal tea and a fat-free cookie. <laughs> I, I just laugh. I, I, I think it's a miracle I was able to do that scene without laughing. As a matter of fact, I, I recall we did two passes. And only on the second pass, Bonnie came, ran forward and said, can you yank your wig off and your earrings? So it was uh, virtually an improvised moment. I just thought it was hilarious. Welcome. My name is Judith. Thank you, Judith. We have beverages as well as hummus and pita, if you'd like. Why not? I'm wearing control tops. Pardon me. No, it's entirely my... F oh, my... Oh, it's me, Dr. Solomon. Oh. <laughs> I'm wearing women's clothes. Ah, that's it. Who plays Sally Solomon is Kristen Johnson. In terms of Sally, I would have to say, and this is the second third episode we ever shot, and it's the episode where she kicks down the door, uh, she wears this hot red dress, this guy's not calling her back, and she goes to a bar with uh, Jane and Simby, and uh, just screams in rage. It's, I think it's a pretty funny, I think that's a funny moment. Sally. I've come to check your phone. Favorite episode or moment um, is, it's almost impossible to come up with, but I think just as an all-around show, I think without a doubt it would be the episode where we find out um, that we're Jewish. That, I think, in a full, well-rounded episode is, is one of my favorites. And it was the most fun to do, so. I'd say uh, when we're first uh, discovering our ethnicity, our race, um, that one was just so good. Everybody at school is something extra, you know? They're African-American or Italian-American, Asian-American, audiovisual American. <laughs> we're human-American, that should be enough. No, Dick, it's, it's part of my mission as an adolescent to rebel against my upbringing. And if you don't tell me what we are, then I can't do my job. <laughs> Frankly, I can't work like this. I got to sing and play guitar, and I got to join ASCAP for writing that song. Because, <laughs> yeah, well, um, what, Joe Fish wrote the lyrics, but, like, I made up the tune, you know? So <laughs> I got to get into the songwriter's list, which jazzed me when I was 15, so that... That can be a good favorite. He plays Harry Solomon, folks, it's Frank Stewart! Uh, you know what, we've done a lot of nice episodes, but I think the one that still stands out the most to me is the 3D episode. I love that episode. I just, there's something very different about it, and it's its, its own beast. I think my biggest challenge playing Harry is is keeping him moronic. <laughs> I think sometimes you kind of have to uh, remind the writers uh, that uh, you're really only operating with a brain stem and uh, not to give him too much uh, logic or reasoning. <laughs> There's 
there's this one moment that I always see when they play the the highlight reel, you know, of uh, when French and, and I are feeding the baby, and it's it's a hilarious thing, and that was such a funny scene, but I always resent seeing it because I mess up, and I laugh at the end, and they kept it, and I always was really bitter because I thought I could have like done that scene well. It's so funny, and French is so funny that I laugh at him, but it's still it's still one of the funnier scenes, I think even though I messed it up. <laughs> hey, uh, he likes it! Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. You know, I think the thing I'll remember most about the last six years is uh, really just the day-to-day -day workings, which is, uh, you know, coming in and you've got a cast and crew that sort of becomes your family. And you know that when you walk through the door, Donald's going to give you crap. And, you know, Bill and Monty are going to be curled up sleeping in a corner. <laughs> you know, you know, it, that type of thing. Just these people, these people I've met, honestly, from the writers to the, the crew and make a pair, the wardrobe uh, the producer Zzz. um and uh these 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 three guys john french and joey that i feel like literally are my brothers and they've helped me learn so much about myself and so much about acting and i will um i will if there isn't a seventh year i will miss that more than anything everybody the people that's it that's that's why it's still fun to come back that's why I look forward to coming here is because everybody's cool and I like everybody and everybody likes me and uh, I've never been on another set that's like that that there's not at least some people at each other's throats everything's cool here I guess breaking up you know, there's a reason why every season ended with a, with a blooper reel. Uh, we spend our days laughing, laughing and laughing and laughing, trying to figure out how to make other people laugh. And I always loved the performers, the, the performances, but I loved it when we got to laugh, too. And when at last our mission's finished in duty, homeward shall we fly. Back to the heavens in our mighty spaceship.